if I'm going to really go for healing and enlightenment, if I'm going to go for this lasting healing, not some kind of band-aid approach, not some kind of affirmations that, you know, are here today and gone forgotten tomorrow, but if I'm going to really go for the healing, I have to be willing to look. I do have to look within. And so I don't like to sugarcoat things. I mean, we show these movies, we have all kinds of tools and, and exercises, all kinds of sessions. Just, it's just a huge array of things that are just tools and symbols and devices that we have found are helpful. My thing has been, whatever I found that I found was helpful in my healing process, I want to share it with all my brothers and sisters. Uh, I feel like that's a way of saving time. And so, we need to open up more to this thing like we're all in this together. We're here to clear this immense guilt, ontological guilt, that is underneath the, the, the lower, the subconscious mind. It has, we have to have allowance for it to come up. And I would say, experientially, it's the same with healing. That's why we have to learn to, I will step back and let Him lead the way. We have to let the Holy Spirit unwind us and take us on this journey through this guilt to the light. The focus is always on staying open and receptive to the Spirit because the ego doesn't know the way. The ego made the guilt. It's not going to offer any helpful solutions for healing. It doesn't want there to be healing. It wants the guilt to stay in place. <laughs> We've gone through experiences with relationships that, for most of us, were gut-wrenching at times. And they were so gut-wrenching that there's part of our mind that said, never again. Oh man, I am never going to go through that again. And, and then the mind like closes down a little bit. It, it has, starts to put barriers up. And it starts to, it's like it starts losing hope in a solution. And then it just kind of starts getting more cynical. Um, you know, just kind of goes down a, a pathway of being more cynical. And what that means is it just kind of shuts down, it, it closes down, because it thinks it knows something. It, it thinks from, I have collected enough evidence from these years on earth to conclude that the world is this way. What happens when the mind shuts down like that and can't feel and can't feel love anymore. I've concluded something cynical. I know I've, I've been overwhelmed. I know that these emotions are like sharp glass, like sharp pointy glass. It's so, they're so prickly, they're so intense. And of course it seems overwhelming. You know, it's almost like we came to planet Earth and we, nobody gave us an owner manual. You get an owner's manual for everything in this planet, but not for your life. Nobody tells you how your mind works. Nobody tells you where the emotions come from. Nobody delineates what your goal should be. Nobody tells you how to discipline your mind and, you know, to train your mind to align with spirit. Nobody. Says that. It's almost like you've got to find it out, you know, on your own. And it's a dark journey. It's like, it's like some of these real dark movies. You, you, you feel like you're walking in the dark, and you don't have a light. And you stumble, and you trip, and you fall down, and you fall into pits, and snares, and you get trapped. And that's the human condition. But actually, just you raising the question, just you exposing, this is how I feel, that's the first step in the turnaround. If we don't have permission to talk about how scared we are, if we don't have permission to talk about how overwhelmed we are, or paralyzed we seem, how are we going to learn to take other steps? We have to know that it's safe to do that even. That's part of the, the healing process. And then I think also you start to feel like you have support. That, that, that's the most important thing, that you're not in this alone.